Now then guys, it's got a really, really quick video for you today. Uh, it's not the video I was planning to make, but with things being what they are, it's uh, I haven't been able to get out much. It's kind of, everything's gone to shit really. So it's kind of delayed my plans for some of the videos I had uh, lined up, but they're still, they're still going to be coming out. It's just going to take a little bit longer, unfortunately. But do not despair, because I've got an absolute roller coaster ride for a video for you tonight. We're going to be installing this scope on this rifle. So strap yourselves in. It's going to be a wild one. So it's not a massive job at all to install a scope properly. Uh, a lot of new shooters I tend to speak to seem to have uh, seem to have reservations about doing it, thinking it's a really intricate procedure. But that's not the case at all, really. You just need some basic tools, and you can you can set it up perfectly. Um, one of the main ones you're going to need is a way to keep the rifle steady and level. So obviously I've got mine sat in the vice here, nice and level. It's got just enough force supplied to it that the rifle's not going to move about but it's also not enough to crush the action and things like that. What else have we got? Um, obviously you want a level. Now you can get nice little levels, you see gunsmith levels that attach to the rail, ones that attach to the scope, things like that. That's absolutely fine if you want to use them, but I've always found a nice little boat level like this with a decent edge will work just as well. And one of the main things we're going to want is a proper torque driver. So a torque wrench, torque driver, whatever it is, but make sure it's actually in calibration. And ready to go because this is one of those jobs where applying the right amount of torque is crucial there's a lot of times when you're working on a gun where you can just kind of do things ft and it doesn't really matter but the last thing you want to do is apply too much torque when you're fitting a scope and end up damaging your tube or whatever because you're just going to end up with a really expensive paperweight right let's get into it then so obviously we've got our rifle this is my remington 700 16 inch barrel model it's just sat in my pull stock and this is just a Vortex Viper PST scope. I'm going to be using a set of rings, two-piece set of rings, but this procedure would be the same whether you're using a, a one-piece mount or whatever. It doesn't really matter. Now, the first thing to do is to get the rifle set up nice and level. Actually, no, that's not the first thing to do at all. That's a lie. Let's rewind. So, sorry, the first thing to do is we've dismantled our rings. Where are we? Here we are. So we'll dismantle our rings like that. So the first thing we're going to do is just sit them on roughly where we think we're going to want them and just kind of get them just finger tight where we're going to be. Now when we're doing this, if you can see this, look, when we're putting the scope rings on, we want to always make sure that they're pushed forward. So you want to sit them in the, in the, in the rail and push them as far forward as they'll go before we tighten them down. And that just helps mitigate any recoil on them. So I've just got them finger tight. Then you're going to take your scope and you're going to sit your scope in. Put your ring tops on and just tighten them down. Just again, just nice and just so that so, you, so the scope can slide about in them in the in the mounts. Then we're going to pick our rifle up and you're going to set your eye relief. So you want to when you're setting your eye relief, you're going to look through your scope at the highest magnification. Make sure you've got all your focus adjusted and everything like that set up. You know, shoulder the rifle as you would normally as if you're going to take a shot and you want to be able to see the full sight picture at full magnification so you might have to adjust this you might have to slide the scope back or forward or even adjust these rings do that a couple of times until you're happy where it is and then mark mark those positions with just a pencil or whatever and just mark them on this one you can see it's got marks on it already i don't know if you can see here and here because this is not the first time that I've um, and again with these lugs where they're mounted on the rail there marked in pencil as well because this is not the first time this has been on this gun it's been sat on another gun for a couple of weeks just doing a bit of testing that's a video I've got hopefully coming out in the future and get a little bit more time behind it soon so where are we right so once we've got that set we can go ahead and actually start fastening things down and talking things up so I'm gonna actually take the scope off at this point because I'm going to apply some thread locker. So I know the position that my rings want to be on the rail. I'm just going to go ahead and apply some thread locker to these. Nothing too fancy, just some medium strength stuff. This is a bit 243, locked tight. Just apply a teeny little smidge on there. Put that on the rail. And again, when we're putting these on the rail, we're going to push them as far forward as they'll go. That recoil lug wants to be engaged. And so that rail as far forward as it can go. 
and that's going to help when the rifle's recoiling it's going to it's not going to shake around it's going to be engaged into that picatinny rail and it's going to stop it moving so again just a teeny tiny bit of thread locker on there get them down hand tight and then oh, we're going to apply we're going to tighten them up properly with the right amount of torque no i know what you're thinking guys could this video get any more intense well take a deep breath because i'm about to talk to you about the importance of applying the right amount of torque to your scope whoa let's say you apply too little torque and you don't quite get everything snug as you as you should which i have done before when i was a younger man uh, ran into trouble with that you think you've got everything snug down nice and tight you zero your rifle it's fine you put it in the safe next time you take it out you zeros off because you've potentially knocked your scope or whatever as you put it in the safe or it's in a bag or whatever and it's it's not snug down tight enough so it's just maybe moved a little bit or jumped forward or whatever it is or your mount's not quite secure on your on your rail uh, you're going to run into trouble in fact it was only the other week actually i was out with a couple of mates shooting a my mates 223 we were trying to zero with scope a few of us and we kept we were stacking rounds on top of each other for two or three shots and then all of a sudden one would jump a few inches to the side and then the scope would be off I'm thinking, what the fuck's wrong with this is it a rifle is it scope and it was only after about an hour that we kind of uh, realized the the scope was it installed the scope and it was loose and it was actually just we were wobbling around inside of the mounts <laughs> so <laughs> you know <who> you are <laughs> but uh, yeah it does happen guys so so conversely, you go and you fucking hook smash your scope down and you apply too much torque, you can potentially crush this tube, this is only a thin aluminium tube, you apply too much pressure onto there, clamping your, your rings down. At the very worst case, you could actually deform your tube and your scope's pretty much ruined. Uh, you could even run it, you can run into tracking issues and things like that if you've got too much force on there. It's just it's just not a good idea really. The other thing a lot of people don't realise as well is with a lot of mounts, these included, look, these are just some little vortex mounts. I've got a magnet there and a steel barrel, but there is no steel reinforcing in there. They're just drilled and tapped straight into this aluminium block. The only steel on here is on the recoil lug and the fastener there. So Aluminium obviously very soft you can if you apply too much torque on there you can start stretching them threads You could even strip them out and then you you're down a set of rings So it's definitely crucial to apply the right amount of torque. Okay, let's get back to the exciting video Every manufacturer is going to be different recommend something different for a clamber to a rail These I think these are these are vortex ones. I think and they're 50 inch pounds It should be recommends to tighten these up to the actual rail which uh, works this is a wrench that goes into newton meters where are we this is a one to six newton meters now 50 inch pounds is about i think it's about five and a half something like that this is set from last time i did it anyway i'll look that up and let you know there we go so we've got our rings set on there nice and snug now talked up the rail's still nice and level that's one final check before we sit the scope on there you can't see that on camera but that is very nice and level across there so we're going to sit the scope in we've got our ring positions marked on the scope so we know where it needs to be in terms of uh length front to back movement i've gone ahead and i've put a little bit of loctite on each of these cap screws on there don't need a lot just a tiny little smidge it just Help stop them backing out under any vibration. Same again on these six, these six cap screws. Set them in there, and we can start driving them in. Now we don't want to snug any of them down at this point. Just going to engage the threads on them, but leave everything loose. You don't want to be snugging any of them down. Right. So we've got all them cap screws threaded in, and we're at the point where we're starting to bottom out we've got very little room on them there's no real wiggle on them and what we want to do at this stage is just make sure that the gap between the top and the bottom part of the ring is roughly even on both sides of the scope yeah on both sides of the ring sorry you don't want one in full contact and the other one sticking up do you know what I mean? you want to you want to keep them even you don't want it to be sat like that okay 
So we do that and we get that roughly snug. So that's, that's still got, we can still adjust that scope, which is what we want, but it's not rattling about anywhere. Now we need to make sure the scope's level. So best way to do this is if you've got a, a cap like this is to remove it like that. And then that'll give us That'll give us a real nice smooth surface there to level up on and we can sit our level on there and then nice and gently just gonna twist that scope don't need much there we go make sure that's sitting nice and level now we know the guns level it's held in the vice nice and secure we know that rails level so now we're just gonna yeah, that's perfect, that right there. Now I'm gonna keep that on there whilst I talk up. Now, talking up the rings, obviously we did these at 50 foot pound, uh, 50 inch pounds, uh, for fuck's sake, don't do it at foot pounds if it says inch pounds, or as you will end up with a fuck scope and rings. So again, every ring manufacturer, scope manufacturer is gonna tell you something different. This is Vortex Rings, Vortex Scope. They recommend not going above 18 inch pounds on their actual uh, ring fasteners there so that works out to be about two newton meters so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna go in a cross pattern so this so when i say tighten up in a cross pattern it means where are we it means we're gonna go corner opposite corner opposite side opposite corner and that just means we're we're nice and evenly fastening that thick that ring down and in the case of this, which has got six, we're going to go, so it's going to go corner, 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 and then the two middle ones, always going opposites. A bit like when you uh, fasten a wheel back onto your car. We'll run this one out one. Again, just half a turn in each one. And we're going to keep making sure we've got a nice even gap on both sides of those rings. Yeah, nice even gap. Back to this one. Right, so after a bit of tedium, we're at the point where we're starting to get to our torque setting. So there we go, one click on there, opposite corner, click, opposite corner, click, opposite corner, click, middle, opposite, click, and click. Uh, last one. Now, because I'm really fucking anal, I like to go over them all one more time, nice and slowly. So you might find you'll just get a fraction of a turn on them. Voila, there we go sorted so now we've got everything topped up everything's still level we've made sure of that we've kept the level on there we've made sure we're level as we're going so we're happy with that we can put everything back put our turret caps back on fasten them off obviously this will all need re-zeroing once it's been off the gun it's never gonna quite return just fasten them up. I don't bother talking these up, I'll just snug them down when they're only grub screws. Doesn't really matter. He says, after just lecturing you all about <laughs> applying the correct amount of torque. <laughs> but there we go, I think we're about done. Wonderful. Set that up to my eye. Lovely. Great stuff. Right then guys, there she is, all built back up and ready for the range. Hope you've enjoyed the video, or at least found it helpful some of you. As usual, if there's any questions or comments or anything you want to know, anything you think I've forgotten, just let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, give it a like. Uh, subscribe to the channel, I've got a few dozen of you now actually subscribing to the channel, which is more than I thought I'd ever have. Although I'm pretty sure one of you is my mum, so if you're watching, hi mum. And uh, the rest of you, I'll see you all soon. Cheers guys.